Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Another Sunday, I would say night, but it's so sunny out right now. Probably a little bit more and the sun will start hitting me right in the eye and I'll have to sit to the side like I have to do sometimes. Uh, but, what do we want to get started with? I want to start with highlighting Danny's aquariums. I'm going to put his link in the chat right now. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask me, you know, if they can get a shout out, stuff like that, and, you know, Danny even kind of mentioned those kind of things a long time ago, but the important part is he's settled down and become kind of a fish keeper and a YouTuber and uh, just making consistent content. And I watched his video today on his local fish store tour and I enjoyed it and I thought, you know what, let's get him some love here and so if, you know, even one out of five of you people go and look at his channel and subscribe, it'll make a huge difference on his channel. And uh, so I want to start with that, start by giving back a little bit first before we delve into tetras for tacos um, but what else we got going on we've got uh, Rapashi on the website it's for sale it's on sale I mean it's 15% off I've got mine that I feed here this is community blend and uh, so yeah if you go to the website you're gonna notice it looks a lot different I spent basically a couple of days working on the new website because I had my minor surgery and I wasn't allowed to do much else so time spent doing that and while you're there don't forget we've got you know, the aquarium co-op towel, I was working all day, so that's why it's kind of dirty, but grab yourself one of those, so. Alrighty, let's hop into Tetras. Who's got questions about Tetras? What do we want to talk about? This is, so of the list of things that have been requested, this is the thing that's been requested the most that I haven't done yet. And I, myself, am not sure what we're going to talk about yet, but if that many people want to talk about Tetras, let's talk about Tetras. So we got... $5 super chat from Steam Fought Aquatics says, Love Danny. Yeah, so go check out Danny. He's a cool kid. Not from the US, by the way. Uh, let's see here. Would I consider having a Tigrinus catfish in the 800 gallon? Um, no, I wouldn't. In my opinion, that would be a waste of the 800 gallon. I would do like a 360 gallon, maybe a four or 500 gallon with a Tigrinus. Um, but the Tigrinus catfish keeping it with other fish that I want to keep with. I don't want other predatory fish. And in general, when I have owned Tegrinus catfish, they have been uh, predatory and they'll beat on other stuff. And I don't enjoy that in large scales. So um, I would downsize the aquarium if I was going to keep that. $5 super chat from Nisi. Nice haircut. <laughs> Hashtag hug all your fish tanks. My niece said that in one of the videos. For the, those of you that are new to the channel. Um, but do me a favor and... Uh, you know, invite your friends, get your grandma watching. I know it's a beautiful sunny day and that's hard to compete with, but. Uh, what small tetras besides neons can go in a 10 gallon tank? Uh, so I probably is gonna be a lot of them, but I would say like ember tetras would be like one of the best ones. Nice kind of red color. They only get about inch and three quarters, maybe, maybe inch and a half. Um, I really like the kitty tetra. I fell in love with that one in Japan and it's kind of just a like a silver tetra with a black spot on the tail and these extra long fins so I like that one quite a bit um, and they would do really well in a 10 gallon that's the important part here I'm trying to think of what else really thrives in only a 10 gallon that's gonna be a tetra I know there's gotta be a few more I could think of um, small small tetras I can think of rasboras all day long but I'll, if I think of some more, I'll chime back into that. Uh, let's see. I currently have a 125 gallon fully planted tank. How many rummy noses could, would you consider to be a good amount to keep? The only other tank mates are panda quarries. So a lot. You know, like if it was me personally and I was setting up a tank that's a 125 with rummy nose and uh, panda quarries, I myself would not do less than 300. And that, that's expensive, and it, it's, you know, a lot, but, like, I'll keep 300 in, like, 90 gallons. And even in my 40 breeders, we typically keep at least 200. Otherwise, it doesn't look full enough for me. And so, probably your budget will give out before you run out of space for those rummy nose. Why do all my rummy nose roses always die? All parameters are zero, and water is medium hardness. I had 15, but I only have two now. 
Don't know. That's kind of an ambiguous question. That's like saying, why did my dog pass away? I walked him every day. It's like, well, you're going to need to have more info. But, um, you know, if you're getting all wild-caught ones that are already really big, it could be they're close to the end of their life expectancy anyway. If they're all captive-raised and they're really small, you could actually be starving them to death. That happens for some people. It could just be that they're coming from your local fish store and they're already sick. Um... You could also have like some predators in there, like let's say you had big angelfish and they're not getting quite enough food and they're hunting down some at night. You could have uh, you know, something like a Raphael catfish. I run into that one quite a bit at the store where they don't know why they're losing fish, they never see anything happen, but the Raphael catfish is on the hunt at night, or maybe an upside down catfish or something like that. Um, but looking f from it objectively, you just gotta kinda keep you know, putting your head to it going, well what could possibly be doing this? Um, so yeah. What large tetras would you do in a 300 gallon with other fish? So it depends on the other fish, but a lot of the bigger African tetras are an option. Stuff like the Congo tetra. Um, I'm trying to think of other things that... I haven't kept a lot of the African tetras, because they're kind of expensive. Um, yeah, because... You know, I wouldn't say, like, pink tail Chelsea's and stuff like that. They're not going to be tetras. So, you know, maybe, depending on how big the fish. Like, I have no idea if we're talking Oscars or we're talking, like, oh, yeah, four-inch fish. But a lot of those, like, bleeding heart tetras, Colombian blue tetras, like, their bodies get pretty decent size when they actually grow up. You're going to buy them, they're going to be pretty small. But as they get, you know, mature, they're quite a bit bigger. And because that body is wider, like, round... It's harder for them to get eaten, um, whereas like a slender body, even if it's like this long, is you know they can come up behind it and eat it. Um, so yeah, wider body and Congo tetras are like my favorite big tetra. I think, I think that's a true statement. Uh, let's see thoughts on a scientific name that I don't know. I feel like the Po Cherax Weitzmani is the the black. Uh, the Blackwater Tetra. I can't remember the name of it, though, but let me Google it real quick. Yeah, it's the one I thought. Black Morpho Tetra. My thoughts are most people should never own them because they have to be kept in such acidic water that most people will struggle with them. They're a beautiful-looking fish. I personally have never played with them, though. I've watched people play with them, struggle, and really, uh, you know, not enjoy them because it's so much of a struggle. How many Congo Tetras in a 110-gallon tank? I'd probably go, I'd probably do like a group of like 25 or so. Like I, I tend to always go heavy on groups though because I want to see a lot. That's what I find really impressive. I always feel like I can do more water changes. I can do things. Um, so I would say somewhere around like 25 because once they're at about that four inch mark, they're going to really look cool. Um, but you got to make sure you have the room for it. Like so there's not a bunch of other, um, you know, fish in there kind of competing for food and that type of stuff. Uh, hey Corey, have you have you bought tetras grown in Florida ponds? What state or country do you source majority of your tetras wholesale? So I have bought them from there. I typically don't because their water is so much different than my water. They don't do well. But most tetras uh, that I get from like another country are gonna be out of uh, I think China most times. I think China. I mean Singapore and China are the two main farms that I interact with that are making tetras. Um, yeah, and for whatever reason, I personally find in Florida, a lot of times the tetras and stuff will come with anchor worms and things like that because they're being raised outdoors, and I don't know if the birds or whatever is carrying them in Florida, and I don't run into that problem uh, from overseas. I don't know if they're just treating them first or what's going on there, but so I just, I've had much better luck um, for overseas when it comes to tetras. My gold neon tetras showing mate mating behavior, but no eggs. Are they infertile? Gold neon tetras. I don't know. I mean, to see, like, I don't know, sort of gerariums, Inc. I don't know how in tune you are with breeding neon tetras. Like, their eggs are crazy small. I'm not even sure most people can see them within their naked eye. But if you're already used to, like, breeding neon tetras, um then yeah, maybe you're having some problems there, but I, I would think it's unlikely they're infertile. Um, but I do want to talk about gold tetras next, after this uh, 
the super chat. Clay Hodges, $5 super chat. Corey, I have 11 really old diamond tetras, which is another kind of bigger body tetra, by the way. Three have swollen eyes with what looks like small white worms in them. Any idea what it might be in the treatment? So, I think that's a wild-caught parasite, and I've never found the answer to it. Most commonly seen in uh, cardinal tetras, and it becomes a clear, uh, like, bubble, and then usually you can see, like, a worm in it. And I'm not sure that I have ever successfully rid the fish of it. Like, I might have gotten it to go away, but then it comes back later. And so, the unfortunate part is, after hearing that, I don't really have a recommended treatment because I'm not sure anything has been, you know, actually good at doing it. Um, if I had the diamond tetras, my my attempt would be quarantine tank with higher levels of salt, trying to dehydrate the parasite. That's what we do for ick and things like that. Is usually the parasite will give out before the tetra will, and you can actually dehydrate it. That's actually how you kill ick with salt. Is it dehydrates it because the water is saltier uh, with a different density than the organism. It pulls the water out. No water left in. It dies. Um, so, yeah. Do I sell a lot of diamond tetras? I do not. Uh, only because they were highly returned. We used to sell them for a while because I like the fish. It looks good. But people would just return them nonstop. They're too active. They're too boisterous. They're too whatever. They're, they're used to them being neon tetras. And they're just not. They're a much more active tetra. So, um, but we chose to stop selling them unless they're special order. But back to gold tetras. Uh, the gold tetra is fun because it's got that gold color. And it's actually a bacteria that lives on that fish uh, that makes that gold color. So without that bacteria, it doesn't look like anything at all. It's pretty bland. And uh, so if you breed that fish and you don't introduce them back to the parents the fry will never look anything like the parents. The bacteria has to spread, and it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. It doesn't hurt the fish or anything like that, and they've been able to uh, use that bacteria on select other fish. I think one of them is one of the half beaks they've been able to bring it over onto. Um, so kind of a weird thing when it comes to tetras on that one. What's my favorite tetra? Um, I don't know, I feel like if I had to pick one, I really like Neon Tetras. They're just simple, cheap, and good. Like, I like them. Do Ember Tetras go well with Discus? I would say most likely not. I haven't tested them at that higher temp, but as those Discus, you know, hit their 8-inch span, uh, they could become fodder for, for Discus, and competing for food will definitely be difficult. So... Um, Cardinal Tetras are more expensive than Neon Tetras in my area. Any thoughts why? I don't know specifically why they're more expensive. I just know that typically everywhere they're going to be more expensive. And uh, same in my store. Um, I think it stems from way back when when we had to import them instead of breed them. And the price has kind of always kept its... Um, I guess gap but even on the wholesale list for me personally uh, cardinal tetras are two and a half times more expensive than a neon tetra is so I think it's a case of breeding chin chin says well ten dollar super chat I've been using your method of quarantine but instead of ick I'm using super ick by API but was told recently just to use paragard I'm going to be using it on L46 so any advice as which to use so my advice would be don't switch uh, on zebra plecos, and here's why. If you haven't tested those meds together, you could be making a lethal concoction that's just going to kill them. So, like I use IKX, and I always use IKX, because I know with those other meds it works well for me. But what if you switch to Paragard, which you've never used before, and what if Paragard plus... Um, like general cure is a lethal combo, so I, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't want to be testing something like that on L46 zebra plecos. Um, yeah, so that's that's just my personal opinion there. Um, you could, you know, being there's zebra plecos and maybe you're going to take extra extra good care and extra long. Maybe you do one at a time. Like you're like, okay, here's erythromycin. Okay, here's general cure. 
and then okay here's Paragard and you space them out over a couple of weeks apiece so you can repair that fish in between um, yeah but I, I would just be weary of never combining meds you know so for instance let's say the doctor had said well I've never tried these three medicines together but your you know your family members dying uh, we can go with these three that we know that work well together or we can go with this other set of meds that I've never tried before like it makes no sense to go crazy when we know something over there kinda already works so I would say um, use what you know and then practice on something else like a, a you know, if you were breeding something, let's say at a bunch of guppies, you could test like on that guppy tank and go, okay, well it wasn't lethal. Uh, and the other thing too is, like, um, some of the meds I've used are horribly lethal to like catfish and nothing else. So there's that whole aspect too of even if you tested Paragard, uh, Erythromycin, and General Cure on guppies and it works and it works and it works and it works, and then you try it on some Corydoras and they just die instantly. It's not everything works well for everything. Um, so yeah, got to do some testing. Uh, I don't know if it's been asked yet, but are Tetras good with live bears or will they attack Fry? Hi from Australia, tacos rule. So Katie, I would say it depends on the Tetra. So, like, in my experience, Cardinal Tetras, Neon Tetras, uh, Rummy Nose, most of those that are kind of, like, thinner-bodied and more docile work just fine with live bears. Now, the trick is live bears and Tetras kind of want different water. But depending on, like, if you get Tetras that are raised in Florida, they're going to want really hard water, and so do, you know, guppies and stuff. So that matches up. But, like, wild-caught Neon or wild caught cardinal tetras and then uh, sword tails raised in harder water, it's gonna be really hard to merge that water to where they're both reasonably happy. Um, but you know, I, I probably wouldn't mix like guppies and serpe tetras, like that's gonna be a most likely a disaster because they're really nippy. But I think you could find something uh, that would work well for you, and it depends on tank size. If we're talking a five gallon tank versus a 55, those are both very different scenarios. Uh, let me make sure I haven't missed other super chats. LG3 Nation at the very, very beginning, I forgot about this one, at 1 o'clock today, so that was four hours ago, said Ember Tetras are number one. They're pretty good. Uh, is there a Tetra that would do well and still let shrimp breed, or would I need to add tons of cover to let them survive? Well, I think with any fish with shrimp, more cover is better, and even if you don't have uh, tetras in there. More cover is just better anyway. But the ones that I've had good success with, the smaller the mouths, the better the success. So I, like, if you look at my fish room videos, you'll see that I breed a lot of orange shrimp in the tank with three or four hundred neon tetras that I raise up, right? So those worked well for me. I know uh, some shrimp breeders that have used um, ember tetras. But I don't have specific experience with Rummy Nose Tetras. I suspect it would be just fine. Same with Cardinal Tetras. I wouldn't probably go with like a Colombian Blue Tetra, Diamond Tetra, Serpe Tetra. I think those are more likely to eat them. But with enough cover, out of sight, out of mind. So if it can't see it, well, it doesn't know to eat it. Uh, let's see. I used to keep Emperor Tetras years back, but can't seem to find them in Georgia area. Is it my area or are they not a common find? I think they're just not in favor at the moment. Um, like I think today, Rachel O'Leary put out a video on the Emperor Tetra. Um, but they come and go on the wholesale list, I find. I bring them in, they sell okay, and then they like you know the market dries up for them, and then I don't bring them in for six months. Um, so I bet your local store is experiencing that too. Like, well, they're not, they don't sell enough to keep them in all the time. Um, but if you keep expressing your interest, like, oh, I'm really looking, I'm really looking, I'm really looking, eventually they'll probably stumble upon some. Uh, Jam Nation says, do you think having a large school of tetras affect the bio load greatly versus fewer larger fish? Hmm. Well, so no, it, the number of fish itself doesn't matter. So if I have one pound of neon tetras versus a one pound Oscar, they're going to be relatively the same, as long as you're putting the same amount of food. So if you put in, 
uh, an eighth of a pound of food and it feeds all the Tetras. Or you put in an eighth of a pound of food for the, the Oscar. It's the exact same waste to the aquarium. And so that's kind of how, like stores, like myself, we keep fish alive in a store. So let's say today there's 300 neon Tetras and 20 gallons of water. Uh, but tomorrow there's only 180, and then three days later there's 70, and then two days later after that there's 20, and then three days after that there's 300 again, right? So we're selling them, and then we reload, sell and reload. Well, what we're doing, though, is no matter what day it is and how many fish are in there, we're feeding the same amount of food. And so, like, that's why when I'm not at my store as much anymore, we have it dialed in so that employees are just feeding cubes of food. So it's like, oh yeah, the neon tetra tank, it always gets two cubes of cyclops every day, right? Whether there's 20 fish in there, 200 fish in there, it's because we know the tank is used to digesting two cubes of food every day. And it's that consistency, no matter how many fish are in there. Um, now, long, 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 long term, let's say two cubes of cyclops isn't going to feed 300 neon tetras at adult size. So, um, you know, there's a little bit of difference there, but that's how we pull it off at a fish store. What are easy tetras to breed? The easiest, in my opinion, would be black neon tetras and emperor tetras, because I've, I've made both of those, I've oops them. Where you're just keeping a tank, and then oops, here's some babies, and you raise them up. Uh, so I would say those are the easiest, in my opinion. Do all tetras like strong current or weak current? I would say no. There's definitely some of each, especially if the long fin varieties are not going to want a lot of current. Uh, let's see. Shout out to my husband, Jeremy, who is watching, and I am away at the hospital on bed rest. We are fans of yours. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully you feel better. What is your thought on the best schooling tetra or fish? Uh, for a tetra, I think rummy nose are the best schoolers. Um, as far as a fish, the emerald eye rasbora is a really tight schooler as well. Um, ooh, I really like silver tip tetras in a big group. Ooh, that just reminds me, like I was going to maybe do a big group of, um, tiger barbs in the 800, but what if I did like a thousand silver tip tetras? That would be insane. Gives me something to think about. Uh, let's see. Is it true that neons or cardinals need to be in an obscured tank without any light black paper... Uh, stick on, stick on it. So I think what you're referring to is to breed them. Um, I haven't done it personally, but the the common wisdom is that those fish, their eggs are light sensitive, and uh, sometimes you get them to spawn, you got to dim the lights and stuff like that. So be, being that I haven't done it, I can't confirm or deny if that's actually true. I think what most people do is they just follow that because it's easier to breed them anyway, but I don't know how much the light sensitivity plays into eggs fungusing or not. So that's that's all I got because I haven't done it. So uh, Let's see here. Do me a favor, by the way, guys. Um, in the comments below after, let me know what you... You know, you miss from the old website what you want to see add to this website. You know, I'm, I'm redoing it. Usually, kind of like once a year, I'll redo some stuff, and then I kind of let it go for a while. I'm trying to get all my YouTube videos up on there so that it'll be searchable by the index. That's one of my big goals was so that people can actually search up my videos. You can do it on on YouTube on my channel, but not a lot of people seem to be able to figure that out. So I'm hoping to make that better. Thoughts on glow light tetras? I think they're an unsung hero, Trevor. I think they're a real cheap one, and they look really good. So I keep them on hand at the store all the time. In fact, probably in one of the videos that's coming out soon, you'll see I brought in 500 of them because I import them. And uh, I just think they're a nice, cheap tetra. I like them a lot. I think they should get more, um, more play. So Nick K with a $5 super chat. I have multiple rainbows with signs of cotton mouth. Too many for my quarantine. Would it be okay to treat the whole planet tank with Ickex and erythromycin? Yep, you could. So that's the reason why I use those meds is the meds that I recommend, they're invertebrate safe, they're plant safe, they're catfish safe, they're loach safe, they're pufferfish safe. Literally everything I come into contact gets with gets those meds and even with plants and everything. 
So that's why, you know, I can recommend them because I've used them in every situation and I haven't had any problems with plants. I haven't had any problems with invertebrates. And uh, so, yeah, I, you know, people don't realize like that concoction of meds probably cost me $10,000 to develop. And I'm just, I give it away for people because I want them to be successful. Everyone's always asking, will this work? Will that work? I don't know. I'm not willing to put $10,000 worth of fish and time trying to figure out if that's a lethal combination to this set of fish or that set of fish or this invert or that plant. Um, but yes, to answer your question, Nick, uh, I would definitely use Ickex and Erythromycin. That's exactly what I would do uh, if I had Colmenaris, which is cotton mouth, on my rainbow fish. Uh, let's see here. Miss not being able to buy something on your website and still able to hear live stream. I don't know what that means. Miss not being able to buy something on your website and still able to hear the live stream? I don't understand that, I guess. Miss not being able to buy something on your website and still... You just have two windows open, Deets. If you're, if you're actually having problems, email me because you shouldn't, like, buy just... Are you talking about maybe, like, on a mobile device? But it should just be two windows open... Uh, like if you're on a desktop computer, you should be able to listen to this and buy or shop at the same time. Uh, let's see. So, Mr. Science Geek says, 50 cardinals in a 10-gallon is too much to begin with. So, this is the part where I chime in, and I haven't read the other comment. Let me read his. I have a well-cycled 10-gallon planet tank. I put 50 cardinals in, 6 thereby, and 6 tomatoes in quarantine. Everything died within three days. Ick present. Forum seems to suggest ammonia burn killed them. Thoughts? So, he did ask for thoughts, so that's good. But I can easily keep 50 cardinal tetras in a 10-gallon planet tank, no problem. Easy. So, you're judging based on, you know, what you might be able to accomplish or what the internet says is right, but easily. I keep 300 cardinal tetras in 11 gallons of water every day, all day long, pretty much. Yes, do I have 50% water change every day? Yep. But, you know, we don't know the whole story here with Carlos. I, I saw, you know, I saw his post on Facebook. And so I know he got them from a store. And they were cheap. And they died quickly. And things like that. And they weren't quarantining. So in my opinion, like in my personal experience, I might touch, you know, several thousands of cardinals every year. And in my experience, bacterial infections are very, very common because they're shipped in tight quarters. Um, and so, like, let's say I, I, I unload 500 cardinal tetras right now, right? So at 5.30 in the afternoon. If I unload 500 cardinal tetras and I don't put any meds until tomorrow, I'll have lost 80% of them. And you're going, why? Because the bacterial infections they have right now that I can't see will spread that fast through the entire colony of them and take out most of them. Now, if I put in erythromycin right now, tomorrow, I'll go, oh, I lost four of them. That's it. And so they're really prone to bacterial infections. And it's, it's like any other animal in the world, right? Put huge numbers in small spaces, and a communicable disease spreads really quickly, right? And it can get out of hand. And that's what probably went on for Carlos as well. Um, you know, I can't know, but... If in my experience, ick itself takes a while to kill, uh, whereas the bacterial infections can take them out real quick. So, uh, I have a 20 gallon with five black neons, five rummy nose, 10 cardinal tetras with a pH of 6.5. Should I move them to a harder water aquarium? Well, first, know that pH and hardness are completely independent. So because you have a pH of 6.5, you could still have liquid rock water. But in general, tetras don't need a lot of hardness. I would say your life might be easier keeping them at 6.8 to 7.0 pH. Um, so that might make some sense in that aquarium. Uh, and some water hardness, like it's good to have some minerals in the water, but just know that those two are independent. And I wouldn't move them specifically for the fact of moving them, but I might alter their water if you're having any problems. Uh, let's see. How many cardinal tetras should I have in my 10-gallon? As many as you want to keep. 
you know, 10 might be a great number for you, or 6, or 20, or 50. It depends on, you know, like, like I have a tank right here with the turtle eggs. This is not on auto water change. My water source is all the way across the building, uh, things like that. So for me, in this tank, if I was going to set up a tank right here, I'd probably keep like 10. And it's because I don't want to be a slave to the water changes. Whereas if it was, if my sink was right here and it was here, I might keep 40 of them in there because I go, oh, water changes are so easy, why not? Um, so yeah, I would, you know, it's a number that you want to keep. So. Grandma here, all right. I'm setting up a 40 breeder and I'd like a large school of rummy nose. Uh, would they be too fast and rambunctious for pearl garamis? Uh, other suggestions? No, it should work just fine. Programmies and uh, Romeo's Tetras, that's like peanut butter and jelly. So, yeah. Do I have Jungle Val or Val on my website? We definitely do, yes. Well, I should check. We, you know, I do sell it. Whether it's uh, correctly displayed at this exact moment, I don't know. Let me look at other plants and see if I can find Val real quick. Yep, Valisneria is under other plants on the website, so it's displaying correctly. Also, if you use the search feature, that would work as well. Um, people are asking about colors and things like that. Focusing on navigation and things like that, and then we'll skew some of the color. Like, for instance, it just says Aquarium Co-op right now. Like, well, that'll probably become like a, a small little graphic and stuff. Um, but working on actual functionality... Because you can play with colors and stuff all day long, but if the website itself doesn't function well, and really it's the mobile. I love the mobile design a lot. And uh, the old website, in my opinion, was not user-friendly for mobile. And uh, so, yeah, an evolution for sure. And I've noticed my Neon Tetra's bump is slowly getting covered in spots that appear to match with the fish's brownish scales. Any thoughts? Your Neon Tetra's bump. Like... Okay, let me... I'm trying to decipher what the bump could be. Bump is slowly getting covered in spots that appear to match with the fish's brownish scales. What bump? Like, you, like is it more of a hunched back? Is that what we're talking about? Hmm. Not sure. What's my least favorite Tetra? Um... What's a Tetra I really just don't like? The problem is like everything's everything done right is really cool. But if I had to pick one I'm not I don't I guess I don't see what people's love with bloodfin tetras are. We sell them, people love them. I just look at it and go, out of all the tetras, this is the one you pick? Like, man, it seems like there's so many more better Tetras, but to each their own. So, that's probably what I would pick, I suppose. Do I ship outside of the United States? We do not. Nope. U.S. only still. Have you had problems with Bloodfin Tetras, with Glowlight Tetras and Neons? I haven't. They seem to work okay. Um, let's see here. What is the ugliest Tetra? Hmm. Ugliest? There's got to be some real just like brown slug looking Tetras. Um, they just don't really come in that often. But there's going to be non, just like just a, just a silver type Tetra. Yeah. Any experience with the Bucktooth Tetras? Yeah, Exodons. I've, I've only kept them for other customers and in the store. I've never um, kept them personally. I'm intrigued. Like, I, I enjoy how much of a frenzy feeder they are. Um, but the Abramite Tetra... Let me Google that real quick because I feel like I know that Tetra, but it's not in my mind. Oh, the Headstanders, yeah. Um, I haven't kept them a lot. So... So, yeah, so experience is not really. No, not on those. I've kept more of the Bucktooth Tetras. The Headstanders, I feel like there's a lot available of them, but the ones I always look up, they're not the coloration and stuff like that I'm really into, so I never end up bringing them in. 
Uh, $20 Super Chat. Whoa. That's, thank you. Uh, Charles, from Charles Mick, Mick, oh, this is hard to say. Charles Mickamack. Yeah, Mickamack. Corey, you saved me and my fish's Popeye. Or wait, you saved my fish. The Popeye went away. EM and water changes for a week. Fix him right up. His favorite fish, Paratilapia. Ooh, what is that? Hold on, what do I... Try... Trident Tiger? Trident Tiger? I don't know that fish. Let's see if I can pull that up here. This is, I'm just, I'm so shocked that it's a, you know, it's an African that I just don't know. It's an endemic to Lake Malawi. So if you guys don't know, endemic means it can only be found in Lake Malawi, which most African cichlids are endemic to where they come from. Um, but yeah, that's interesting. It looks pretty cool, like the yellow chin version. Joel Hernandez, why is it taboo? To keep fish together. If water parameters overlap and there's no chasing or bur bullying, why not? Example, Buenes Aires Tetras and Fancy Goldfish. Uh, Joel, the answer to that is simple. The internet. People love to judge others. And so, the funny part is, when you go and visit people's fish rooms, when you go and talk to people, you see that, I won't say everyone, but a lot of people are keeping lots of mixes of fish that never should go together. Should. And yet it's working out great. And uh, I definitely have done a lot of that in my career. Uh, I think most fish owners definitely have. Especially if you're working with the public. All the time. Every day someone walks in and, and goes, wow, you have the worst mix of fish you could have. And yet they're working out great for them. And so I think a lot of times what's happening is... We're so fearful that someone has no clue at all, and they're going, can I keep Neon Tetras and Oscars together? So we have to jump down their throat, and we judge everything. And that even when we start getting into things like, well, what about you know Neon Tetras and African Cichlids? People jump down their throat, and yet I've done it. Like, even though water parameters are different, like, I've kept shell-dwelling cichlids and neon tetras in the same tank, and it worked out great for a very long time. And so I think it's it's easier to shoot ideas down and back it up with facts from the internet of, well, this pH and this pH are different, this hardness and this hardness is different, than it is to be able to say, oh, I've done that, and here's my experience. So I think that's what happens. But I'm sure it's a mix of all those things. And what I really find is... There's a lot of people that will say you can't do that. And the people that are doing it and know it can be done, they don't want to speak up because then the, the attention is just on them, on how they're, you know, you're an idiot. Why would you keep them that way? Blah, blah, blah. You know, so they, they don't, you know, white knight for the person that they could help, you know, and go, well, I've done it and it worked out great and here's what is going on. And uh, so, yeah, I think that's why it goes on, Joel. That's my, my honest best guess there. Is a black neon totally different type of tetra from a normal neon, or is it just a color variation like the red delta guppy and blue delta guppy? Uh, they're completely different, Flynn. Uh, let's see. I may have missed a five dollar super chat. Let me look. Um, nope, I got it. Good. What is the best type of tetra to have? A glow light tetra. Hmm, from Colin. I would say, so I, I always think about colors. You've got orange, right? You've got the orange line. Um, so I would want something like polar opposite. So cardinals wouldn't be that way. Um, ooh, I thought of another tetra for 10 gallons. Green neon tetra, by the way. So back to that first question. Um, glow light. What would I pair with a glow light tetra? I would pair, what would I pair? I want like another bold color. I'd probably do maybe a black neon because orange and black kind of looks cool, I think. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> a 
Is this Dora Killer getting getting caught by the Nightbot? No, she's she's a moderator. She can't get caught. Uh, oh, okay, so it was a growth on his mouth that is getting smaller thanks to the medicine he suggested. Now the bump is changing in color. Okay, so that was that question we're talking about the bump on that neon tetra. So it it was a mouth growth. And the erythromycin, or whichever medicine I uh, had suggested, is helping, but now it's changing color. That's pretty common. So, like, for instance, like, let's say you cut yourself, and at first it's going to be really red and inflamed, and then you, as it, like, kind of heals, it turns color. So, usually, I, I consider that to be a, a good sign. So, I think you're working in the right direction, especially if it's going down in size and that type of thing. Are the shiny gold schooling fish that you chose as one of your favorite fish in the store tetras? What was my... Was it the uh, the silver tip tetras? I, yeah, those were one of the top five. I bet you that was it. That's the one I was thinking about. Maybe the, the 800 gallon. Because a big, big school of those would be cool. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm laughing. When your wife super chats you, you just instantly think, Oh, we just lost, we just gave YouTube money. <laughs> uh, have I talked about what's going on tomorrow? If not, $5 for you to chat a bit. So yeah, tomorrow, the 800 gallon aquarium gets installed, 10 a.m. I've got, I won't say a bunch, but people are coming to help, and hopefully all goes well. Um, it took longer than we thought to build, so the above tank sump is not even started yet so but we've got all these people and uh, I wanna start by thanking them they took days off work well the day off work cause it's a Monday we're gonna move that stand in then we're gonna move the tank in and uh, then that's kinda it right cuz I wanna I wanna really film setting this thing up and uh, there's some special filtration and I got the good people at Fluval they uh, have donated some supplies, so that's cool. I've got one, another YouTuber, or not YouTuber, but uh, a viewer, or a fan. Uh, what's his name? Oh, I always look terrible when I. I think it's Jerry. I think it's Jerry. But uh, someone's helping by making a couple of graphics, so I can have like a little fluval thing as a thank you, and then I think I'm gonna put the aquarium co-op logo on the stand. And so there's a lot of stuff to go into this project. And I gotta do some plumbing, and there's a lot, but that's the goal tomorrow is just get it in this building and not have anyone get hurt, no one drop anything, get it 100% level, and things like that. So it's gonna be a very stressful day tomorrow. And I, I was thinking about that today as I was getting ready, so I was getting like my fish room ready because everyone's gonna wanna see it. And I'm going, man, I'm supposed to be really excited to get this 800 gallon tank, and here I am going, oh, I got so much to do by tomorrow. And, but I think I'll, I think about this time tomorrow, I'll be on cloud nine just going, look at this thing. Are you kidding me? Okay, I gotta climb inside it again. You know, cause I, I gotta take pictures of me inside the aquarium. I mean, that's like a rite of passage, right? So, $10 super chat from Melody. Corey, can you give us an update on the baby turtles? How are they doing? Any new eggs or any new hatchings? Uh, so, no new eggs, but we did have another baby hatch out yesterday. And, um, you know what? I might have to start, we'll see. I could start, if you guys really want it, and we'll talk about this, if you really want to watch an egg not do a lot for another two days, we can do it again, but I just looked over here. Let me see if I can hone in on this for you guys. You can see that the sun's right in me, ah! Uh, but, let's take you over. And, so right in the center there, let me see if I can do that extreme close-up of my finger. Let me see here. Where's my finger? Like right above my finger. It looks like there's a piece of gravel on that on that uh, egg, but it's actually open. So the nose of the turtle is sticking out of that egg. So that's where we're at with that one. And the one, let me do my finger trick. Ugh, right above my finger right there. That one's the one that hashed out yesterday. So if you guys want, maybe I'll do another like ridiculously long live stream where uh, it hatches out and all that because it's kind of a fun time to hang out in the chat and just chat for all hours of the night and that type of stuff but yeah I just noticed that one is poking out 
Oh, there's two. There's two, actually, that are poking out. Oh, I just realized I'm probably, like, yelling into that microphone. It's right here. Uh, so maybe we could have, like, we, ooh, we got to have some kind of, like, poll. Like, which one's going to hatch first? That could be fun. So, uh, let's see here. What's the difference between erythromycin and furin 2? Uh, I don't know the active ingredient in furin 2. Furin 2. Let me see. See if I can pull up active ingredients. They never make it easy for me to see the active ingredient. You gotta dig a little bit. Ah. Oh wait, maybe it's safety, da safety data sheets? Oh, I gotta keep clicking things. Learn more, learn more. I don't know what the difference is off the top of my head because I can't get to... The MSDS is not making it easy while I'm live. Too much reading to look what the active ingredient is. So the difference is they're two different medicines and uh, I, other than that, I don't know. Like, like bifurin, that'll attack gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, but furin-2, I don't know specifically what's in it, so I can't say. Uh, hey, Corey, I have some Pristilla and Neon Tetras that I'm feeding frozen bloodworms and frozen brine shrimp. Uh, is this good diet, or should I supplement with flake or pellet? So, Cody, that is a good diet, but I would supplement with something that's uh, high in vitamins. So, like right now, you know, Rapashi is on sale on the website, 15% off, uh, until like tomorrow at midnight or something like that. Uh, but the important part is that it's going to have vitamins put into it. A flake food would, a pellet food would, but I would add that in. I like to do frozen, freeze-dried Rapashi, something like that, like five times a week, and then like a dry pellet or something or a flake, like twice a week. I think that's close to optimal. Uh, preferred male to female ratio Congo tetras. I like all males, but if I'm taking males and females, I like two females to every male. Are mosquito larvae on par with brine shrimp in terms of nutrition? That I don't know. I've never looked at the makeup profile of mosquito larvae. Um, that being said, it is really good, and I don't think it's ever going to matter in your fish keeping career. I would say just feed them. Like, it's going to be good. Uh, let's see. You and Bob should do a live stream where you guys just sit in the 800 gallon tank once it's, it's on the stand. Could. It'll fit us both, but, uh... I, sh I feel like we just need to have a picture or a video of Bob standing next to it. And we'll use Bob for reference. But I kind of want to get me and the dogs in there and, uh, you know, have some fun. Roll around in it going, ah, so much room for activities in here. That's a stepbrother's quote. Uh, Bed Lamb came with the $5 super chat. What is the best dither tetra for a super docile community nano tank? So best dither tetra. Uh, I would say, in my opinion, something like a marble hatchet fish. If it's an open top tank and we can't use hatchets, then I would use the kitty tetra. So that, that's, that's my answer for that one. Can erythromycin and general cure be used to quarantine all types of fish, shrimp, fish, and snails? So Corey O'Keefe. In my experience, yes. Everything I come in contact. Now, that being said, let's say you imported some shrimp. Um, most likely, the, uh, like, Ickex, for instance, out of that trio, you wouldn't need to use. If they had a bacterial infection, you could use some erythromycin, but they don't always. Um, and then the general cure, I believe the Metro won't do anything, but the Prozyquentinol in there uh, does fight off some of the shrimp parasites. The key, this is a key question for the Rapashi sale. Other than Soylent Green, what would be great for bristlenose babies? Uh, from Michael. I would say almost any of them. Uh, I, I feed a lot. So like you've seen, I make a lot of bristlenose, whether it's Dwarf Claros, Super Red, stuff like that. I actually feed a lot of the Rapashi because it feeds all of my fish. Um, but what a lot of times what I'll do, so like this thing's mostly, I think this one's mostly full still. Yeah, it's mostly full. Um, but let's say I got down to like half, I would actually buy some more Rapashi, mix it in, so that way I might have Community Blend and Silent Green. And then when I got to half again, I might mix it up and then add in 
uh, like um, Morning Wood. And so that way I get this blend of a lot of different things going, and it keeps them wanting to eat a bunch of different kinds as well. And uh, that's what Bob does. And he even says he got his Mabu Puffer to eat it, so I'm, I'm a little jelly of that. What are you going to use the 800-gallon tank for? Hamsters. Yeah. What's the name of the dog dewormer? Uh, you're probably referring to fenbendazole, uh, which is the active ingredient, and what do they call it? Is it Target? I, f I forget what the, the dewormer is called, like if you walked into PetSmart. Uh, Advantage? I, I don't know. Uh, but flu or fenbendazole is the active ingredient. Flubendazole is the one that you can dissolve into water a lot easier, but it's a lot harder to get a hold of. It takes a vet prescription, so... How many big steens can you have in an 800 gallon tank? Let me let me think. So it's four feet front to back. Let's say he's two feet wide and it's eight feet long. I think I could fit, so in one layer, I could fit two, three, and then it's, let's say he's 18 inches, you know, if he's laying on his back, let's say it's 18 inches. I could fit two, I think I can fit six big steens in my 800 gallon tank. Uh, what should I feed my angels beside blood worms? Some freeze dried foods are so tiny I don't think the fish find it. Um, so Kathy, what I would do personally is I would use uh, a pellet food. I use the omnivore pellets, the aquarium co-op brand, it's got brine shrimp in it and stuff like that, but I feed those a lot to our angel fish and they love it. Even baby angels like, you know, quarter size. Uh, really dig on it. Um, but a good pellet food, I find, works well. Uh, let's see. Oh, man. Average Aquarius just watched Step Brothers tonight for the first time. Oh, man. Oh, and then Shishimi, yeah, what, what rocks he been living under. Step Brothers either love it or hate it, and uh, I find it funny. <laughs> uh, is there a Apache for bettas? Nope, I don't think bettas like to eat on it. Every like, if I have fifty bettas in stock, like three of them will eat it, and the rest won't. So I don't think they're, I don't think it's their feeding style is why they haven't developed one. Where can you order neon tetras in the U.S.? Probably most, uh, most online stores. Uh, probably Live Fish Direct. Probably uh, thewetspot.com. Um, Aquabid probably. Do you think crickets, bloodworms, and beef heart is a good diet for rope fish? Um, so I still think you're missing some kind of pellet in there. Like you can dust the crickets with some mineral. That might help a bit. Um, but yeah, I would try to get like a, like an omni, not an omnivore pellet, uh, like a carnivore pellet, like a Hikari massivore pellet. That's what I was trying to think of. Um, I would try to get something like that in there. What do you feed Big Steen and how often? Oh, man. I need to think of more than just brisket. There's got to be something. There's a funny answer to that. I just don't know it. Dang it. Melody says, remember to like. Yes, please do. Like the stream. Share it if you would. That's always nice. Um, Facebook values when people share it. Even if, you know, if you're like me and you have no friends, even if you just share it to your... Facebook or your Twitter account is going, hey, people like what he's doing. They're sharing it. They don't know how many people see it. They just know that it's getting shared. So, big, but six big steens would be overstocking? No way. Big steen is a schooling fish. He goes aggro when they're solo. Everyone knows that. Oh, man. Uh, can you use the Rapashi for outside pond setups? Yeah, definitely. I, I feed Rapashi outside for sure. Uh, so I feed it as, I make it up and I feed it, but then you sprinkle it on the top. It's a good fry food for like the egg, egg scatterers. What's the easiest Neolamprologus cichlid 5? Probably Burchardi. Uh, Neolamprologus Burchardi, Neolamprologus multifasciatus is also really easy. Um, yeah, and then, I mean, in that same realm, Neolamprologus uh, or no, not the Neolamprologus, but um, I was thinking Julitochromus, like Transcriptus would be easy, and then Neolamprologus lalupi. They're all fairly easy in my opin opinion. Uh, Gavin says, hey Corey, my fish are very slim like they are starving, even though I feed them twice a day. 
What can I do to keep them alive? Very urgent. Um, probably deworm them. If you're feeding them twice a day and they're still losing weight, they probably have some internal tapeworms consuming those calories. I have five glow lights, one female beta, one, albi one albino corridora, and I'm thinking of getting three pygmy cori cats. Is this okay in a 10 gallon? The load is okay, but I would think adding some more albino cori cats would make the most sense um, to that tank, because there's only one lone ranger in there. If you want to set up a breeding for profit tank with cherry shrimp and one species of tetra, which would you choose? to achieve both breeding goals. I don't think it's possible to breed tetras for profit in a tank with cherry shrimp. Yeah, I just I can't think of a way that would not just be a giant waste of time if you're trying to make money. So um five candy cane tetras and an opaline garami live with a breeding pair of germ blue rams. Can they? Yes, in like if that was a 55 gallon tank, maybe a 29 gallon tank. Yep. What kind of tetra would you suggest for a 2.6 gallon nano tank? Um, I probably wouldn't suggest any tetras for a tank that small. It's gonna be hard to keep temperature stable, and because they're a schooling fish, almost no matter what you pick would be uh, difficult to keep them uh, happy. I had a quarry cat get burned on the head and later died. How can I prevent this? So that's not a common problem I've run into. Um, they do make heater guards and stuff you can buy, but I don't know. I've never really had that problem. I'm trying to think other ways you could prevent it, though. Maybe if you put the heater by the output of the filter so it's got the maximum flow of water, it would be hard to get a burn in that situation. Um, yeah, that's all I can think of. Just bought water lettuce from your store. Any tips on acclimating to brackish? I don't have any tips for you. I don't know how well it does in brackish water. So, I mean, slow. I would tell you, take it slow. Maybe, maybe make the water harder first without adding the salt. So, like, just make it with more minerals. Then start trying to convert to uh, more salinity. Maybe try that. What can you keep with a breeding colony of tetras, let's say cardinals? Nothing. Like, even snails will prevent you from getting eggs. So that's why tetras... That's why, like, no one breeds tetras, because it's difficult. I won't say no one, but most people. Like, I probably will never do it. Um, what is my opinion on Chemipure? Have I ever used it? I've never used Chemipure. In general, I find myself not needing chemicals to absorb other chemicals. I use plants to do that. Um, maybe if I was heavily into big Central and South American cichlids, but even then, usually the water changes will fix it. I think Chemipure and stuff like that, I would most likely use if I was on a well or I had some kind of chemical I didn't want in drinking water infiltrating uh, my aquarium somehow. What's my opinion on the Serpe Tetra? I think they're cool in big groups. I think they're like um, like tiger barbs. Like they're cool in their own kind of species aquarium, but mixing them with a lot of stuff can be problematic for a lot of people. How many Tetras would you recommend for one school in a five gallon tank with two female bettas? Maybe something like five or six Ember Tetras? Can you keep Garamis by themselves? Sure, yeah. Minimum school size for penguin tetras. Six! That was the first fish I ever owned. Penguin tetras. Corey, have you noticed just how large lemon tetras can get when they are kept fed and... or are fed and kept well? I think mine are huge, like three inches. Yeah, they're a big fish, and that yellow can get really yellow. I actually... So I used to have, like, 300 of them in Murphy's tank, um, which was Hank's tank back then. But, yeah, I used to have a real big group of them, and so that's the, the trick with retail, right? You get a big group of lemon tetras, you get them big, make them look cool, and then you sell a ton of lemon tetras. 
So yeah, I, I've seen it and I like it. Best Tetra for high temp and discus. In my opinion, Cardinal Tetras. Best source for long fin neons. I would kill for some. I don't think anyone's got them in the U.S. You like the last, the only time I've ever seen them in person was in Japan, and uh, I didn't bring any back with me, so I'm pretty much useless. But yeah, I, w I would keep some. I should track some down because I just want to keep them. I'd be too lazy to breed them, but I'd want to keep them. What's the largest Tetra school I've ever had? Mm, I think for a while we had a 75 gallon at the store where I was keeping 700 neon tetras. I think that's the biggest I've had. It was a 75 gallon, a lot of uh, Val. In fact, that video exists on the channel. Let me let me pull it up so you guys can watch it. Um, let me get to my channel. And I think it's the Valisneria video. Let me see. Yeah, there's, like, it'll be deceiving, but watch this video for a second. And that's what, so keep in mind the scale. You're going to go, wow, that's a lot of neons. And then think about, like, in this much space, there's, like, 50 neon tetras. And then think, okay, this is a 75-gallon aquarium. So that's how you know there's, like, wow, there really is, like, 700 of these things in there. It was really cool, though. And I, I want to do something like, I really like that tank. I really like Valisneria, so one species of plant, one fish. I really like those. Um, so I might try and do that again. 20 long for a hairy puffer. Any feeding tips for keeping the teeth trim? Lots of snails, Matt. And I, I would try to upgrade to like a 29, maybe even a 40 breeder for that hairy puffer. Um, glowfish, are they easy to breed? The Danio ones can be, but the Tetras are pretty difficult. Can you boil water in plastic without it melting? The water always cools it. You can boil water in, in plastic without it melting. Hmm, I don't know what we're talking about there. The summer mini pond Tetra species you'll be keeping soon? I don't think I'll be doing any Tetras outside. For egg scatterers, I want to do uh, maybe some Danios, like the Celestial Pearl Danio. Trying to think of, oh, I want to try Odessa Barbs. I want to try, I'm trying to think of other egg scatters, because like the rice fish, they don't scatter their eggs, so. How does the general public in your area like Neon Tetras? They sell great, do, wait, yeah, they sell great in my state. Yeah, we sell a lot of Neon Tetras, for sure. Yep. Do you need an air stone or an aquarium? And if so, how to keep it in a topless tank without splashing the water all over the room? Uh, in my opinion, every tank should have some air in it. Uh, what I would do is just turn, use a, a valve and turn it down so it's like one bubble every few seconds. And that will dissolve enough in there to make a difference. It won't, not as much as like letting it be cranked, but uh, yeah. Corey, I thought the first fish you ever owned was a fish taco. No, it's probably fish sticks. If it's fish I owned. I did eat fish when I set up my first fish tank, though. How tall does Micro Sword get? Depends on how much light. The more light, the shorter it stays. But I'd say about three and a half, four inches is typical for people. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. So I gotta address this guy just because I think he's not a good. No, not not that he's not a good person, but. In more or less the words, says, thank you for not being dumb and claiming glowfish is illegal. Anybody who thinks that is dumb, uh, goes on, goes on, goes on. Uh, so technically, if I was to breed glowfish and sell them, that is illegal. There is a patent on that fish. And so, uh, one, that, that's actually the reason I don't carry glowfish, is I'm against the patent of the fish and me not being able to breed it and sell it legally. Um, so yeah, that's why I don't like those fish. And that's why I don't keep them. I actually think like the red tiger bar looks really, really cool. But so far, I haven't given in on my morals. I'm not saying I won't tomorrow, but so far I've been able to stay strong and go, you know what? I'm not willing to support that until they legally make it. Not that I'm going to breed it. I'm way too lazy to breed it. But the fact I couldn't, you know, it's an expensive fish. I would love to breed the red tiger bar 
and then go, great, now I've got a school of a thousand, but there's no way I'm going to breed a thousand of them, or I'm going to buy a thousand of them, and so that disappoints me. What is the first thing I need to do in order to get my tank ready for shrimp? Uh, Kyle, I would say watch my video on how to set up a shrimp tank, but basically it's wait. Wait a couple of months, get those plants growing, get the algae growing, get that tank alive, maybe get some snails in there, maybe get a fish or two in there, and when things are really going well, then maybe take those fish out and try your first shrimp. That's what I would do. Uh, let's see. Is it normal for neon tetras to swim alone? I have a ten gallon. I have ten and a forty gallon. Some like to break off from the school and hide. Um, from my experience, that's usually a sign that they're really at peace and not scared. When they're all grouped up really tight, that's usually when they're scared. So, you know, I, I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, yeah, I would keep an eye on it. Adding more usually can help. But if you don't have room, then don't worry about it. But just keep an eye on them. Is the 800 gallon tank coming tomorrow? Yes. Do I eat feet? Do, do I eat feet? Do I eat fish? Definitely. Yep. Love them. My white cloud school increased to 19 today. Uh, 120 long, slowly adding. Awesome. That's a fish. So people are asking, like, what tetras could you breed? with shrimp white clouds they're not a tetra i get it but they are an egg scatter you could pull it off with i've done it that's how i know mm, let's see mm, that's unfortunate this person's asking for a shout out and that's like the first thing uh you know i i won't do and so you know unfortunately you get blocked those who ask don't get. Those who don't ask get. That's kind of how it works. Like, eventually I stumble upon you. I'll watch your videos. I go, "Wow, you're great," and then I'll talk about you. Uh, Corey, did you get any mollies from Gary Lang? If so, any plans to breed them? I'm guessing you mean Greg Sage, Seth. I do have some from him because I don't know that Gray or Gary Lang has any, but I do have some. Yeah. And am I gonna breed them? I hope so. They're definitely finicky, though. I'm, I'm battling with them, for sure. If you miss a water change, like right now my water change system is down, and uh, they're being finicky because i got to put in the new sink, and i got to replumb for the um, the big tank and stuff. Yeah, they, they want, like, two parts per million nitrate is ten times too much. You can't have any in there at all. So my plants are struggling because i got to keep it so clean. Is there any tetra you can put outside for the summer? I would say probably most tetras can go outside, Fish Fanatic. Um, yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to breed most of them, but most of them can go out there. They'll come back in looking really good. Have ever thought about doing a betta breeding pond? If so, would you ever do it? No, I haven't really thought about it. I'm not that into bettas. So I, I know, I mean, a lot of people like bettas. I just am not that guy. I'll keep one every once in a while, but, you know different things for different people. Do I carry blind cave tetras? I don't, but that is a very cool tetra. I haven't kept those in probably 10 years. They're fun though. They they kind of feel around with their mouths. They bite stuff. Rebecca with the $5 super chat. Hey Corey, always look forward to these live streams. Well good, I'm glad you look forward to it. Um, Cause I, you know, I carve time out of my week to make sure I get it done. And if people weren't enjoying it, that'd be depressing. I'd be like, oh, why am I doing this? If I had to replace guppies you keep with Murphy with a species of tetra, what would you choose? Uh, I asked because he requires harder water and fast tank mates that can't get accidentally bit, correct? Um, what would I keep with them? I mean, I've done tetras before. So I've done rummy nose, I've done lemon tetras, I've done black neon tetras, I've done... For me personally, you probably just see what tetra do I want to look at. I did Cardinal Tetras. I don't know if I said that. Um, but it'd be a Tetra I want to look at right now. And for me, if I did it right now, it would be a ginormous school of Neons or Cardinals, probably. Because I think it would look cool. That's what I would do. Rob's in the house. Rob, as in flip a qual yeah, There he is. Yep. I was on his live stream earlier. If you guys don't know, he's doing a 
It'll be the video I think is coming out soon, but he's doing a um, shrimp breeding competition. You buy some shrimp from his website, you compete, we win prizes, it'll be fun. Uh, I'm going to compete, and uh, I don't anticipate winning because I'm going to be super busy this summer, but I will have fun regardless. Like, that's the great thing when you play in a competition like that. Like, let's say I make, I start with 10 shrimp, and at the end of the summer or whatever, I have 70 shrimp. But the guy who wins, or girl who wins, has 194 shrimp. Yeah, I didn't win, but I still made shrimp, and that's good, right? So, either way, you get to win, really. Um, Corey, I have a school of ember tetras. The school keeps kicking out a single tetra, and that single tetra then dies. This has happened three times now. Why does this happen? So, Matt Close, how big is your school? Usually, the bigger the school is, the less likely something like that would be to happen. But, you know, maybe you got a bunch, and I'm completely wrong. Recommendations for plants for a 65-gallon tank with community rams. Oh, with community rams and angels? Um, probably, like, I would just do lots of easy plants. Cryptocorns, maybe some Valisneria, maybe Anubis, uh, Java Fern... Yeah, I mean, most of the plants on my website would work fine. That's, you know, it's kind of like if, if I was to ask you, what plants should I plant in my yard? And you're kind of like, well, what do you want to look at? Kind of the same thing, right? Like, well, there's a bunch of stuff. What direction you want to go in? Uh, what's going in my ponds this summer? I'm not 100% sure yet, but I will say I either over-harvested my Daphnia or they're dying out because I haven't fed them yet and the green water's gone. So my Daphnia is struggling a little bit. I fed some to my mouth brooding bettas today because they were looking a little skinny, skinnier than I wanted them to be because um, they're holding, you know, the females are holding even though they keep swallowing because I'm putting no effort into them. But um, rice fisher uh, for sure. I want to try some Odessa barbs. I just got to set up set up the tanks. So hopefully that's in the next week or two. We're supposed to have good weather coming up and it's it's a lot easier when you're not being rained on to go work outside. I'll tell you what. Um, how big would you go for a plant grow out tank? I'd probably just use something easy like 55 gallon tanks. Perfect tank setup for a spotted Congo puffer. Probably a 40 breeder with some passive tetras um, planted. And maybe like, well, it's, you know, any kind of filtration really. Hmm. But yeah, that's probably what I would do. How are the best guppies ever fry coloring up? In your most recent video, they looked like they were almost ready to sex out. Right now, all I see is like some black tails. That's that's about as much as I got for color on them. So, you know, a watch pot never boils, so I'm trying not to look at them too much. Just like I try not to watch these turtle eggs all the time. Because I was watching them really intense, right? And nothing was happening. I stopped watching them for a few days, and then, oh, look at that. They're starting to hatch. What's a nice fish I can keep with uh, melanistis cories in a 10 gallon? And any way to keep the water clear? New filter or something? I have a silent Aquaflow 10 filter. Um, I would get like a tetra going there, like maybe some neon tetras. And then get like a sponge on the intake of that silent aqua flow and it would probably clear up the water quite a bit for you is it possible to breed both guppies and emerald dwarf rasboras in the same tub outside which yeah um so that's danny erythromicron it'd have to be like a 700 gallon tote like you'd just be better off using like 250 gallon totes and splitting them up because I, I think what's going to happen is the guppies are going to eat all the really tiny fry that hatch out from the erythromicron danios. Planting a 40 breeder, I would like two tight schools for midwater, Corey's at the bottom, and a betta on top. What are your recommendations for the two schools? Well, my recommendation would be don't do two schools because they'll probably school together. But, uh, rummy nose tetras, and then what's going to offset their color... I would do like rummy nose tetras and maybe like rasbora hets. 
Any suggestion on Tetris that can thrive? Moderately hard, 7.8 water. Uh, Congo Tetris. Could I get a German Blue Ram if I have Tetris barbs, Rainbow Shark Corys, Platys, Swordtails? Sure. In the right size tank. You know, you're going to have to heat it up in there. They like to be real warm. What Tetris species dither would you use for colony of spawning Apistos? Uh, the common wisdom with Apisto breeders is to use either pencil fish, because they have a really small mouth, or uh, hatchets. Have I ever kept a Faka puffer? Not personally. It's a store, definitely. Um, I won't say all my employees, but a lot of my employees have. I've always kept uh, Maboos. Uh, I have one I'm growing out. Do you know if they're meaner than Murphy? Yeah, typically Faka puffers are more aggressive than Mabu puffers are. Just on an average. You could have a really peaceful, peaceful one. You could get a really aggressive Mabu puffer. But in general, their temperament's a little, uh, little meaner. My opening Grammy has hole in the head, and a week later my candy canes had ick. They're all alive, super happy. I didn't lose any. So many people lose fish from ick, and I'm a year into fish keeping, and I'm 15. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, most fish shouldn't die from illness. It's usually a lack of using the right medicine or identifying it. You know, most people, like all day long, we're answering emails, right? And they're like, I have ick. And then you finally get pictures, and you're like, no, that's not ick. Like, they just assume... Like, a lot of the hobby, especially when you're new, assumes ick is like saying, like, oh, yeah, you know, my wife, she's got crud, you know, and like, oh, is that a cold? Is it the flu? Like, you know there's not feeling well, but people transfer that kind of thinking over to fish and don't realize that ick is actually a parasite as opposed to, like, yeah, they just got some crud going on. Hey, Corey, I'm thinking of making my own aquarium, 20-gallon long and stand. Do I have any advice for DIY builds? My advice is buy the aquarium and build the stand because for 20 bucks at a PetSmart you can buy it. It will probably cost you more in silicone. I mean, maybe you can get the glass for free, but I would just buy the tank and then build yourself a stand and uh, research what kind of stand you want to build. What's the best way to sterilize nets and old used tanks that may or may not have disease before? Let them sit in the sun for a day or two. They'll be sterilized. Usually if they've been sat, sat out of water and they're completely dry, not a lot's going to be able to transfer over. Would I put koi in the 800 gallon? I would. I thought about it, actually, but so far I'm not. Would you be able to keep rosy barbs in a 20 long? It could be done. It'll be tight. They'd like a bigger aquarium, especially as they get their, like, you know, really get big. Um, but I bet you could get a couple years out of them at least. I keep it around 78 and have a 40 breeder. So you're too cold for German Blue Rams. You need to be, in my opinion, at least 82 degrees. I know you usually do not sell fish online. For some reason, I have the idea that you sell bettas when it's warmer. Am I, am I misinformed? Uh, I probably said that in a video where I would consider doing it, but uh, we are not selling any fish online currently. Is there a common misconception with my customers about Tetras? Something you and your employees have to constantly educate on about Tetras? The only misconception would be, like, it's just human nature. Everyone wants to buy fish in pairs. Well, it's got to have a friend, and they don't know about, you know, pack behavior and stuff like that. So it's real common for people to walk in and go, I want two of this, two of this, two of this, two of this, two of this. And then we have to try and sway them, to like, how about instead of two of these three types, how about six of one? And uh, goes okay about 60% of the time. Titus schooling largest tetra to keep with peaceful cichlids. Uh, currently I have diamonds, but want something that schools good and tight. Most tetras don't school that tightly, so like rummy nose tetras. Can goldfish live in a pond all year long? If so, well, I need a heater and what size pond? Oscar boy, that would depend on what your winters are like. So here, I don't have to use a uh, heater and I can keep them out year round. But maybe in Wisconsin, you can't pull it off. I don't know. Suggestions on stocking for a 2.6 gallon. Kyle, in my opinion, maybe some plants and, and snails, but... Like, my store doesn't even sell anything under five gallons because we believe that really it's it's just, it's not easy 
to make... Well, well, let me just back up. If you have to ask what to put in a 2.6 gallon, you probably should be keeping a 2.6 gallon. That's kind of how it goes. Now, if you've been keeping fish for three years and you've done a bunch of tanks and you go, oh man, I really want to keep this species of fish in this 2.6 gallon, because you know that it will do well in that 2.6 gallon, is probably enough that you will do well at the 2.6 gallon. And it's not that you can't go from not knowing that answer to doing it successfully, but if I was to ask how do you drive a race car, it's very unlikely that I'm going to win a race tomorrow. Right? Kind of see the logic there? So we try not to set people up with anything under five gallons because it's much more difficult. And in general, you know, people like, for instance, maybe in a 2.6 gallon, you plant it up really well, you keep one scarlet baddest, and you feed it live food every day. But you might go, well, I don't have live food, and well, I'm not that good with plants, and I don't even know how to get a scarlet baddest. And so, like, it's kind of a foreign concept. How big do Congo Tetras get? About four inches. So, Corey, 100 clowns, 50 tiger barbs, and 200 chili rasboras. Are we talking for the 800 gallon? You're about 200 clown loaches light, and I'm thinking maybe as many as 1,000 tiger barbs. The chili rasboras, they're just going to get eaten by the clown loaches, I'm pretty sure. What is your least favorite question aside from this one? Uh, the general Q&A live streams. Uh, my least favorite question is, what would I put in this aquarium? And it's because they never give me enough parameters. So it's like saying, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of, like, the same question you could ask instead of, like, what should I keep in my aquarium? It's like saying, what should, uh, what should you eat, what should I eat tomorrow? And then it's kind of like, well, what do you like to eat? What did you eat yesterday? Oh, you, you already had that? You know, so why I don't like the question is the way it's formatted. If you say, I have this size tank with this hardness and these fish, and I've thought about adding this fish, but is there an alternative that would work better? That question I can answer. But, you know, if it's like, what food should I eat as a human? It's such an open-ended question that I either spend a lot of time trying to track anything down... Or what happens a lot of times, they go, oh, keep this. And then they go, well, I don't like that fish. And so it doesn't actually solve the question. So that's my least favorite question. Because um, it's all, you know, it's all opinion-based. You know, if he said, what color car should I buy? If I name any color, it's my opinion. And doesn't mean it's anything any better than any other color. Uh, let's see. How much do I sell clown loaches for at my store? I think they started about $9.99. 687 people watching, 324 likes. Please don't forget to leave a like. Please do. Thank you, Dean. Thank you to all my mods. I don't thank you guys enough. I should, and I apologize. Um, I do appreciate all the work you guys do for me, because you do do a lot of work. Um, in general, my mind is so wrapped up into catching the questions and answering them that I always forget, and I always think about it the next day or something going, dang it, I don't thank people enough. And so, thank you. I mean, I thank the viewers and I thank that kind of stuff, but thank you for the mods, because I do know, you know, believe it or not, you're probably going, oh, I want to make sure I'm going to be there on Sunday so I can help Corey. So I realize a little bit of your schedule crafting is going based on, um, you know, my live show, and I appreciate that, that you take out time out of your week to help me help other people. So, you know, definitely give yourselves a pat on the back, credit, those types of things, and thank you. Uh, let's see. Hey, Corey, do old-timer, know-it-all Aquarius like me annoy fish store employees? Probably. Yep. <laughs> the reason I say so is because if you're asking if you're annoying, you probably are. I believe that anyone who says they know everything doesn't know everything. Because anyone that knows a lot tries to pass it off like they don't know a lot. Because if you know an insane amount, then you get harassed by people because you know the answer. It's like being the smartest guy at work. Oh, he'll know the answer. She'll know the answer. You go to them every time. But if you're the person that knows all the answers, but they don't know you know all the answers, now you can get your work done really quick. 
and then like you know you've got a lot of extra time and so in general I find whenever I go to a club or I, I go out of town anything you you can pick up you're like that guy or that girl they know a lot but they don't talk a lot and then a lot of times the most outgoing people are the ones that don't know as much as those people that are quiet and it's you know so but anyway uh, all people are pretty much equal. You either get on the employee's nerves or you don't. Um, and there's there's plenty of people who know nothing that are really good friends with the employees. There's plenty of people that know a ton, also good. And it, it has nothing to do with your knowledge base. It purely comes down to how you are as a person. There's plenty of people that know a ton and we can't stand them. Then there's people that know a ton and we love to just chat with them. So it's all regardless of your information level. Someone asked earlier, does it matter what time of day your lights are on a planet tank? I'm curious as well. So it doesn't matter like the time of day, it does matter um, how long the photo period is. So like right now, let me let me line myself up here. Where, so you can see like I'm getting sunlight, right? If the aquarium behind me, if I had the shade up, and it was getting light, that counts as daylight hours. But because it's not on, if the light wasn't on, it would count like it's nighttime for them. And really we want somewhere between six and probably 12 hours of light for a planted aquarium. Uh, it doesn't have to be all at once. You could do two hours on, two hours off, two hours on, two hours off. You could do it 12 hours. You could uh, do five hours, five hours off, three hours. Um, as long as they get light and they get an appropriate amount and an appropriate amount to the fertilizer should be good to go. What you don't want is the sunlight beaming down on this thing for 10 hours and then it gets really dark in the room, then you turn the light on. So it's really like it's 20 hours worth of light. That's worse. So yeah. Uh, let's see. Corey, check out Steamfot Aquatics on Facebook. Someone put an inverted 10 gallon tank in their pond so you can see the goldfish. Yeah, that's. That's been a, a well-known thing. It's super cool. I've wanted to do one with a much larger... Like, when I build my pond, I'm hoping to build it this summer. Um, that I want to do, like, 180 gallon or something inverted. Something big enough that stuff could really swim into it. Like, big koi. Um, but I've really liked that uh, that look. And I'm... So, here's the thing I always want to know. is I've never talked to anyone that's had it set up for a really long time. I want to know if it just gets covered in algae and do you have to run like a mag float to do it or if it stays clean, that type of thing. So that, that's the thing I'm interested in. I've seen people do it a ton, but I've never talked to someone that's like, oh, I've had it going for a year or anything like that. So uh, I bought three Bob's Money rainbow fish today and they are chasing my other fish. Local fish store is closed. I'll be taking them back after work. Will my other fish make it? What can I do? Uh, so Michelle, in a pinch... What I would do is hopefully you've got like a net, you know, like a decent sized net. I would catch all the fish and let it sit like up on the rim so the net's down in the water and close the top. So they're kind of in that cage for the night. Um, yeah, and so here, here is my big pet peeve, by the way, okay? I have no idea of what the local fish store told you or anything like that. But um, what I find is a lot of people... Maybe you buy three Bob's Money Rainbow Fish, you take them home, it's not working out, and then you take it back and you're like, I want my money back. The reality is, I would have to re-quarantine that fish, can't just go back in the tank, stuff like that, and um, usually you would do more research and go, oh, well, you know, really we need to have more than just three rainbow fish, and they should have told you that, and maybe you do. I mean, maybe you have 50 rainbow fish and these three just aren't working out. Like, I don't know your specific scenario, but... That's a big pet peeve of a store owner is people just returning fish like, well, I'm bored of them now. That happens. Literally like two weeks later, like, yeah, they're just not doing what I wanted to do. Um, or, you know, like we had someone do that with a Mabu puffer fish. They had it for two weeks. Well, they had it for one week. They bought it, swore up and down. It's the fish they wanted. They got the right tank. They love it. They love it. They want it. Will you please sell it? We do. A week later, oh, it's not as active as I thought it would be. And so they end up returning it a week, two weeks later, which was this weekend, and uh, so now I got to re-quarantine it and stuff like that. And it's hard on a puffer and it's not optimal. But uh, in general, I would say that if if we made an impulse buy and you said like, hey, I'll take three Bob's Mine Rainbows, and you take them home, they're not working out. 
I encourage people to donate them back to the store because they um, you know, are probably taking a loss on that whole transaction. Even if they, like you say, like, well, let's put them back in the tank. Well, they still had to spend time bagging them up and doing all those things. And uh, But the other thing is, you might wait a day or two, uh, Michelle, and they might totally mesh in and do well. So, you know, a lot of times there can be territory squabbles when fish are new to a tank, and then they find their kind of their hierarchy, and yeah, that's all good. Let's see. I put in, wouldn't put long fin fish with pea puffers. They love long tails. I learned that for sure. Could be, yeah. I mean, I think most fish are nippy. It's just when pea puffers do it, their teeth are so strong that we really notice it. Do pygmy corys and salt and pepper corys school together? Usually not. I mean, they'll if they're forced to, like you've got two and two, they'll like out of fear they'll be like, we got to stick together. It's us versus the world. But otherwise, they'd prefer to have more. <laughs> is it true that Corydoras has to swim in the middle of the water column? It is, Sam. So the fish life, Sam has a channel. It is. They're like my favorite Corydor. I love them a lot. I need to buy more. I need to breed the ones I have. I know I'm the biggest hypocrite. I'm going to breed those some days. I've had them sitting there for a year without breeding them because I'm, I'm a dummy. What is the most social tetra to its owner and other fish? Hmm. I would guess it's going to be like the vampire tetra or something like that. Like some of those bigger tetras are going to have more brain power. But I've never like tested that theory, really. I've tested my, my grandma's water for KH. She has well water with a water softener. And I had to test it two times because it took more than 12 drops. Any ideas? Hmm. Probably just has that much um, KH in it. Yeah, I don't know. Water soft. What, what are they using to soften the water? Just salt, like normal? William Russell, thanks for all you do, especially the podcast. That's right. All this jibber-jabbering I've been doing will be on the podcast. Thank you to another viewer who, uh, you know, graciously, once I'm done, uh, waits for it to finish rendering, downloads it, then uploads it to the podcast for us. And, uh, you know, so it's, if you're ever looking for a little job, by the way, and you're serious about it, because last time I offered this up, people were like, yeah, I want to do stuff. And then I was like, here, could you do this? And like, well, well, <laughs> I thought it was going to be fun stuff, you know, but because that's like a thankless job. Like, I rarely thank him because he's on autopilot and I'm a busy man but it does help the community because I, I promise you this if the guy wasn't uploading it to the podcast the podcast wouldn't exist I would just be like ah it's on YouTube that's what you guys get um, so you can make positive differences and there's only so much time in the day and I have to make cuts and the podcast was one of those cuts and uh, luckily he picked up the slack for me any advice on keeping a planted rummy nose tank clear without carbon? Uh, use some fine filter floss. I mean, are you running into like tannins? Um, you could use Purigen. Purigen is reported to not um, absorb, my brain can't work, uh, fertilizers. Donate a back some uh, mu muba cichlids? Muba. Muba cichlids. I don't know that. Nice fish, but sold to me as haps. Uh, not my style of fish keeping. Yeah, I mean, that's, so that's, I, I definitely side with the customer. Like, if you were to buy a fish from me, and then it's misidentified, and you're like, hey, this isn't that thing, 100%, I have no problems going, wow, I'm a moron, my bad, or my employee's bad, or whatever. Um, yeah, there's no problem with that. Uh, the Fish Nerd, thanks for all the inspiration and great info you share. Your breeding for profit vids are what got me to start breeding, and your general fish room videos are what got me to start my own channel. Well, thank you for the $10 Super Chat. By the way, it's been a long time coming, but episode number six of Breeding Fish for Profit comes out Tuesday. I haven't done one of those in over a year, I think. It's been a long time. So number six, coming out. It'll be a good one. 
Uh, is there any reason why my emerald quarries are swinging up to the top of the tank and back down at the bottom? They're, they are a week old in my aquarium. Usually they go up and they grab uh, gulps of air. Is that what they're doing for you? That's, that's a normal behavior. Are quarries good for a planted tank? I like corridors in a planted tank. Planted tank. Um, soon I am starting on the aquarium hobby. What fish do you recommend? I'm looking for one or two inches long. I have a 15 gallon tank. How many fish could I fit in there? Rad bear. Um, I would say you're new to the hobby. I would say a very loose rule. Maybe one inch of fish per gallon. And if you're doing schooling fish, maybe that you could push that to, you know, two inch fish. So maybe you could have 15 tetras in there. Um, but without knowing your water and stuff like that, it'd be hard to know. I would say find an independent fish store. Explain your situation. Explain you want an easy time and you're willing to do research. And hopefully you can find a reputable store that will help you learn as opposed to just taking your money. Uh, I'm thinking about keeping fancy guppies. Which strain should I keep? Looking for a good quality that's not overly expensive. I would tell you just to go buy normal fancy guppies from your store. They're cheap, they look great, and why not? You were very inspiring. I was wondering about how male and f uh, female bettas mate. So my first advice would be go over to Inglorious Bettas, which is another YouTuber, Gian. Um, but mostly they, they do what's called a wrap. So first, the male's going to make a bubble nest. This is assuming we're talking about most of like betta splendens and that kind of stuff. Make a bubble nest. Then they wrap together, so it's like two fish, and they kind of wrap their bodies around each other and uh, lay eggs up on the surface, fertilize them, and then you raise them up. Uh, whereas like a mouth brooding betta, they're going to hold the babies in their mouth, and there's a different process there. But I would go to somewhere like Gian at Inglorious Bettas. She's also got a blog. Um, and just do a little bit of research and kind of see the pictures or the video and start learning about it. Uh, five dollar super chat from WTF one A one A. Got my grandma watching. What question would you ask her or advise her to help take care of two comet goldfish in a forty gallon breeder? Uh, too short to ask more. What question would you ask her or advice? Okay. Um, my advice would be this: spend the most money you can on fish food. So whatever the most expensive thing is, buy that. And so I would probably tell you, feed a lot of frozen brine shrimp, uh, maybe live duckweed, and maybe like some rapashi food. And why am I focusing on expensive food? Typically, the more expensive the food, the higher quality ingredients, the less fillers it has. Now goldfish will eat anything. That's, you know, yeah. Uh, but... If we feed really high quality food, we should have to feed less. So with a really high quality pellet, maybe it's one of those pellets for every three of these. You can feed like one third the amount, get the same nutrition in that fish, equals one third as much waste production. So that would be my advice, and that's my advice for everyone really. Spend as much money as you can, or at least buy what you can afford, and every echelon you go up, and I think kind of frozen foods are the top echelon, and then it's down to like rapashi and frozen or freeze dried and some of those Sarah high end foods. And then there's like normal foods, which might be like New Life Spectrum, North Fin, Hikari, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, every company makes different foods, different qualities, different you know levels of price as well. But that's what I would recommend is really spend some money on high quality fish food. It makes everything else a lot easier. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, Shishimi says, Corey, that breeding fish for profit number six has helped me so much these past two days, so I hope everyone soaks this video in. Yes, Shishimi Whiskey, my editor, has to move, and so he's selling off a lot of his fish. And uh, I had never thought about that, but yes, in that situation, that video would help you a ton. So you guys will, you, you guys will know what I mean. Because he's had a lot of people coming to his place to buy his fish and his equipment and that kind of stuff. So you'll get it. If you remember this right now, you're going, oh, I see how that would be helpful. Uh, let's see. Have I ever brought in the bronze puffer, the Modesta? I haven't. 
Um, from my research, they're just aggressive, so I haven't brought them in. Aren't they also known as the avocado puffer? Let me Google that. See if I'm crazy or if I'm close. I always like to, like, see if I'm correct. Yep, it is the... I know it is the golden or the avocado puffer. Also known as the bronze puffer. Uh, I've never brought them in because they're a little aggressive, and I myself don't enjoy aggressive fish. So, um... Not always, but for the most part. If I have the choice of having an aggressive one or a peaceful one, I like a peaceful one. All right, what time is it? Whew, 6.42. We got about 15 minutes left. Oh, yeah, that's a good... Melody says, uh, if you go to Creative Pet Keeping, another YouTuber, uh, she's got a lot of videos and some on uh, bettas, mating, yep. And she raises them, yeah, Kasha. So, yes, check out her channel as well. Sorry, I forgot about that. Uh, let's see here. Making sure I haven't missed any super chats. Uh oh, I did miss one. Bed Lambkin, thank the taco gods, two dollar super chat. That's right. Um, Shishimi is located in Ohio. I've been thinking about a dragon puffer. Do you think they make good display fish? I heard they hide all the time. I would say they hide most of the time. I think. I don't know if it's this Friday, but soon we have a Dragon Puffer video coming out. What's a good dechlorinator that can be used that is safe for human consumption? Uh, we use our fish tank water to water our garden. So I don't know what's specifically going to be safe, but I've used Prime and Hikari Ultimate. We water our garden and we eat them. We've never had a problem. But that being said, I don't know like what's going to be safe FDA-wise and that kind of stuff. So I have no idea when it comes to that. Uh, what do I feed spotted Congo puppers besides snails? Uh, frozen bloodworms, frozen krill, freeze-dried krill, and uh, cocktail shrimp, mostly. Is Phoenix 24-7 good lighting? Yeah, it's it's good if you already own it. If you're um, If you're buying a light, I personally think your money is better spent... Uh, like with a Fluval 2.0, or maybe like the Phoenix Stingray, but it depends on how much light you need and stuff like that. Very true, little large mouth. Piranhas and Pakus are Tetras, yes. Uh, have I ever kept those? No, but I, I strongly, and I say this, strongly considered Paku in the 800 gallon. And I know the 800 gallon is not big enough long term for those Paku, but my logic was if I kept them to where they're about. 30 inches or so, I could buy a bigger aquarium if I was still really enjoying them. Um, so yeah, I, I did consider it. And you're going, well, what if you don't enjoy them? What are you going to do with them? Well, my logic is I'd be adopting ones that already needed homes, and then I would try to redopt adopt them out. So I would like give them another few years of uh, you know, a good life, and then figure out, okay, where can we pass them along so I'm not like making more Pacos that don't have homes, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. What's the use for Java Moss? Mostly it's good for fry to hide in. It'll clean your water a little bit. Easy to grow plant. Um, usually a good money maker. What would you keep a Congo Puffer with a pop Congo Puffer? Also minimum tank size for life. Um, I'd probably do like a 40 breeder. Maybe a 29 gallon. And I haven't kept them personally so i don't know like oh year three they go ballistic on cardinal tetras but i would keep them in more of a community tank will i ever sell easy green to canada uh i won't say never but it's pretty difficult i've looked into it i haven't been able to pull it off yet um <laughs> okay so i'm in my grandma's voice but what would cause a bump on a goldfish on the top fin uh, what meds do you recommend? Usually it's stress. You'll get like a cyst or something like that. And so extra water changes. Make sure the water temperature is not too warm. Keep it below about 76. Um, but yeah, usually stress would cause that. When you get rid of the stress, usually some of that stuff heals up. Vitamin C is dechlorinator. Hmm. I have no idea if that's true or not. No idea. <laughs> 
Say hi to Norma. I got your first grandma to watch. Well, my grandma watches me. I don't know if that counts, though, because it's family. But hello, Norma. Do you think Tiger Barbs and Amazon Puffers will mix well in a 29-gallon? I don't. And here's why, Darren. I think the Tiger Barbs are going to dominate the food, and it's going to be hard to get food to the Amazon Puffers reliably. The Amazon Puffers, in my opinion, are usually pretty shy when it comes to feeding. Smallest tank for a single Pistogramma Agazizii? Probably a 5-gallon. 10-gallon is what I would do, but probably 5-gallon. What happened to the home show? Uh, mostly we've just been editing other stuff, Shaggy, and I don't, I don't even know how many videos come in anymore because it's being sent directly to Jimmy. Um, but yeah, I've just been queuing up lots of other stuff for him to edit currently. And we did have one come out like two weeks ago. It's not like it's been forever. Uh, is it too expensive to ship? I will pay. Nope, it's mostly shipping fertilizer to Canada isn't easy. That's the problem. Like, importing fertilizer into another country is not easy. Uh, what are my thoughts on Blue-Eyed Pacifics? Blue-Eyed Pacifics. Blue-Eyed Pacifics. I'm guessing that's an autocorrect, but I'm trying to figure out Blue-Eyed Pseudomogils? Blue-Eyed Plecos? It's got to be Plecos, right? Uh, are we talking about, like, the Bristlenose or the big, like, Pinoc version? Uh, am I coming out to Reef Palooza in New York in June? Nope. Like, the thought of a saltwater event sounds horrible. I've been to one ever, and it was horribly boring to me because I'm not in, that much into saltwater. So, I would say highly unlikely, unless someone's paying me to be there, would I show up. Um, good day from Australia. You're doing a great job. Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, so, Shashimi says, not been getting much for videos. Send your videos to editor at Aquarium Co-op. Uh, let's get more home shows. So, there you go. We need more videos is half the reason. Is the African tigerfish a tetra? I believe it is. But I'd have to confirm that. Let's see. How much or often do I change water in my shrimp tanks? Well, in the fish room, they get a water change every day. This tank right here has never had a water change to set up. Never. So if they weren't on auto water change, maybe once every year or two I change water on my shrimp tanks. Um, if they have fish in them, they usually get a water change every day. Uh, Pacific Blue Eye. Oh, the Pseudomilgill uh, Signifer. What was the question on it? Have I ever kept them, or what do I think about them? I'm trying to go up and find it. Oh, man. I think it's... I won't be able to find it. Dang nabbit. Oh, wait. What are my thoughts on them? I think they're a cool fish. Yeah. Uh, they're not as common as I wish they were, but, um, yeah. I like Pseudomoga rainbows. Starting my first 70-gallon aquarium here soon. Getting the substrate tomorrow. Been been watching all your episodes all week. Definitely a huge help. Well, good. Good, good, good. What's a good shoal of Tetris for a 40 breeder? Depends on the Tetra you like, but, you know, like Cardinals, I would say like 40 or 50 of them is what I would do. Corey, should I shoot a vid and send it to the viewer home show? Sure, Sam, do it. Yeah. We'll try to, since you have a YouTube channel, we'll try to put like a, a little logo that says the fish life. Um, and that way, if people like your style, they'll come check you out. Do I know any other common names for the silver tip tetra? I don't. I only know it by the silver tip tetra. Yeah. Don't know. Would it be safe to keep endlers and cherry shrimp in a fluval 2.6 gallon? I mean, the problem is I, I, I try to be the most open-minded guy on the planet, and I just think anything under 5 gallons is not good for most people, so I can, like, never recommend it. Because I wouldn't even recommend it to myself. But anything can be done. Would it be safe? With enough care, it could be safe. In practice, I think you might run into a little bit of trouble. 
Uh, John Stearns. Hey, Corey, I have a planet tank. At night, I turn off the CO2 and turn on the bubbler, but in the morning, my guppies are laying on the bottom. Any thoughts? That's pretty common for guppies to, like, sit at the bottom at night. Um, they're probably just resting well. Catfish Cave says, Rachel O'Leary will be in your neighborhood next month. Any chance on a collaboration? Don't know. I haven't talked to her about a collaboration yet. Uh, if she listens to this, let me know if you want to do one. Um, we talked about maybe me driving her around while she's here, so we might be doing that. And uh, I have no idea. I try not to presume because there is, like, I know, like, when I'm out of town, I don't necessarily always want to film with other people or something like that. So she might just want to be like, oh, I just want to take it easy. I'm already speaking and stuff like that. I don't want to use the free time that she has to shoot videos because like, if you look at her schedule, I think she does like California and then a couple days later, Oregon and a couple days later, uh, Washington. And so, you know, that can take a lot out of you when you do back to back to back events like that. So we'll see, you know, never count your chickens before they hatch. Do I need to add more Tetris in a 20 gallon if I have two white skirts, two blacks, a Rasbora and a Glow Light Tetra if I have 19? I would. I mean, I like to have my schools of Tetras specifically, like, with white skirts, let's say. I'd want, like, at least six of those and black neons, at least six of those. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I would, but you'd have to probably get rid of some fish and then keep bigger numbers of some, if that, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see. Would my flu all spec be okay quarantine for a, f for a two inch fish and smaller? Spec five? Yeah, probably E littles. I, you could probably work that short term, yeah. Any suggestions for a light on an 18 inch cube planted tank with low to medium light plants without spending a bunch? I would do. I would do a. I don't know if they make... Do they make that? Yeah, they, they make it, I think. Let me see. Let me make sure I sell it. Well, my website will tell me if they make it. But I'm thinking a 16-inch uh, Stingray is what I would do. But let me look. Uh, I couldn't remember the name of my own website for a second. AquariumCoop.com. Phoenix Stingray. Let's see. I think they still make the 16, yeah? They got to. Yeah, I would get 16, and you're going, well, my tank's 18 inches. I would open up, or I would, like, move the legs out a little bit and put a dab of super glue so that it holds really well, and I would just have it be a slightly smaller thing for the, the wider, and I'd probably use two of them. So I'd have one, like, a third in, and one, like, a third in from the back. I'd use two of those, and a 16-inch, like, on my website, for instance, 40 bucks, and I think you get a decent amount of light for your money there. I feel like we're getting trolled here. People keep asking for the email for the viewer home show. It literally happens in the chat like every 15 minutes, and I've seen Shishimi write it about four times, but it's editor at aquariumcoop.com. What size tank would be good for six Scarlet Battis and six Glow Rasboras? I'm not sure what a Glow Rasbora is, but um, I would say... 10 gallon, maybe 20 long. Scarlet Battis can be a little bit hard to manage their aggression long term. Um, what Tetras would I keep with red cherry shrimp at a 10 gallon? How many? I'd probably keep green neon Tetras and I'd probably keep about 8 to 10 of them. Where would you recommend purchasing killifish from? My local fish store don't carry them. I think the easiest uh, source for most people is going to be Aquabid. Do I ship any light into Canada? We don't. And it's because Canada has different standards for electricity. And so the lights that are sold in the U.S. aren't legally allowed to be sold in Canada. That's why it's more expensive in Canada, too. Unfortunately for you guys. Uh, let's see. So Tanner, I answered that question a while ago. You'll have to re-listen to this to get the answer for that. You must have stepped out of the room or something when I answered it. 
We got about four minutes left. So let me remind everyone that Rapashi is on sale, 15% off on the store, both in store and online. Uh, if you haven't already, sign up for the newsletter. A lot of you guys have been signing up lately now that I've made a little pop up. That pop up only happens like once every two weeks or something until you sign up or something. So it's not invasive. Um, what else? Ooh, do me a big favor. Here, this is, this is like, this is time. This is how Corey asks if you ever wanted to pay me back. Here's how you do it. This is gonna be a big favor. I need a hundred and fifty uh, Google survey reviews. So what does that mean? That means you buy something off the website. Let's say it's a fifty cent sticker. Well, the shipping's gonna be six fifty. But let's say you buy anything. At the end, it's gonna pop up and go. Google would like to know if you'd like to fill out a survey in about a week. If 150 people can do that, then uh, on Google, if people never knew who I was, they I'd get stars next to my name. And you can be honest. If you think the product was terrible, give it a one-star review. It, it's going to ask you like how the service, service was and all that. Probably take you two minutes a week from the day you buy. But uh, it'll then display a rating next to my website just like you know amazon.com would and like other big giant retailers but it adds a little bit of authority to the website and it helps people that don't know who i am go well they're getting good ratings maybe i should see what aquarium co-op is about so if you could if you're gonna buy something which i hope you do uh if you can fill out that little rating and if you go to the website right now you in the bottom left hand corner you'll, you'll see it right now it says no rating available because i just got it no one's even left a, a review. It's got a, you got to buy a product. It's got to ship to you. Then they got to email it to you. Then you're going to fill it out. But once I can get to 150 of those, it will help me. And so if you ever wanted a chance to help me, that is a big way you can help me. Because, uh, you know, I can't buy people to do it. Like, people just honestly have to do it. It has to be 150 different people. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping, like, I've got a guy helping me with some of that uh, that SEO work, and he's like, it's going to take a really long time. I'm going, well, I hope out of almost, you know, 59,000 people in a timely manner, we can get 150 people that buy something to actually do the review. And I get it. Surveys suck. I get it. But if you just do it once, and then, like, once we get to the 150, you never got to do it again. Don't worry. Like, just do it once for me. Give me three minutes of your time, and I'll give you the next three years of my life. That's, an, that's a trade right so hopefully you can do that that would be super helpful for me and uh so yeah what do i got i got one minute left who can i um help i make a mention on planettank.net about your inlet filters they rock well thank you um i, I keep wanting to say i want to say uncle fester but it's like ta unk fester i don't know uh let's see do I ship internationally? I don't, unfortunately. Maybe someday we'll become like a super giant and be able to pull that feed off, but at the moment, it's just not plausible. So, uh, Corey, what made you change the way the website looks? Uh, mostly it is for mobile. Our mobile website was bad, and the way the website was set up, like I'm trying to do things that no one else is really doing. So my goal is to get like all 500 videos from YouTube, make five, well not 500, but make a bunch of different pages on the website. And then let's say you type in erythromycin, right? You go to the website, type in erythromycin. It's gonna show you the video that I've done on erythromycin so you could learn. Then you could also buy it. So my goal is to make it, cause a lot of times, no, let me back that up. Most of my day is spent answering questions that I've already covered in a video and if I can find ways to get those videos in the people who have the questions hands easier that saves work right so that's the goal and so if you guys email me you're gonna notice a new thing is happening uh, in a effort to make life better for my dogs and my wife and myself uh, I have switched it so that I will only look at email Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. That's it. So if you send me an email right now, you won't get a response till tomorrow at 10 a.m. Roughly, because you know maybe your email number 249 might take till 11. But the goal is, 
what happens now, if you send me an email and I reply back, you then reply back. And then so one question turns into 30 questions. But if we make it so that I only answer it once a day, uh, you're less likely to ask as many questions and you'll ask, you'll provide more information. If you know you have to wait 24 hours for the answer to my question, you'll give me like what your water parameters are and you'll give me like, okay, here's the three questions I have instead of here's one and then an hour later, here's another one, then an hour later, another one. And the goal is that uh, I can do some things like uh, go out to dinner with my wife once in a while, spend more time with my dogs. Uh, I, I'm, you know, if I, if I really am good, I will start uh, doing some kind of exercise for my life, that type of thing. And I've really, I want to focus on building habits for myself and my business that will make sure I can do this for a long time and sustainable. And, you know, 500 emails a day is not sustainable. So one of the ways is to make the delay for you getting a response longer, um, which will curb as many emails. Because the problem is, like, most of you are okay. Like, you send an email, I answer, it's fine. But then there's, like, the 10% of viewers who will literally ask 117 questions a day. They literally won't stop asking questions until we cut them off. So they'll just be like, what fish do you like? Oh, I do cardinals. And then they go, well, what about neons? And then I go, yeah, they're okay too. But, you know, I like cardinals a little more. What about Rasbora Hets? What about this? What about this? What about this light? What about this tank? Okay, here's my other tank. What about this? And so it just never ends. And then eventually what happens is I have to go, unfortunately, I got to limit it to like one or two questions a day I can answer from you. And then they go, oh, fine. I see how it is. Fine. I, I, I'm sorry to be such a bother. And it's like, well, I'm not saying that that is the problem, but if there's 500 questions, a, if I can answer 350 of you a day, and there's 500 coming in, and 180 of them are from three different people, it's like, well, I could help 347 people, or I could help, like, 200 people if I got to answer all the questions from the three people. So my goal is to help as many different people as possible. Might not be as in depth, but as long as you're willing to wait, and most people are, but that's the change that's come to my email. And so that's what's prompting all these changes to make sure that the way I interact with you guys and things like that is scalable long-term. And that is my goal so that it's not, the alternative is I could be like, you know, a lot of companies and just be like, oh, you'll never talk to the owner again. Like, it'll always be like some employee or something like that. But I want to be open there and I want to interact with you guys. So I'm trying to make it so that here is a, uh, a way I can do it. And it could be that two years from now that, um, uh, you know, even if I only check it once a day, there's 5,000 emails waiting, and maybe I'm going to have to make another adjustment, but that's what's going to probably get us through the next year or two or whatever, and so as the business and as the channel and all things evolve, other things will, like the website and stuff like that, and we're trying to do things to help more people, and so when you see radical changes like this, know that my goal is to make it more user-friendly, help more people, cut down on work, um, and just make things better, and change is horrible. And, yep, I spent lots and lots of hours tweaking stuff, and I'm sure, like, someone's going to be like, you used to sell this, where is it? I'm going to go, oh, it's not even on the website. i got to put it into this category or something like that. But, yeah, trying to do as much as we can, as efficient as we can, and uh, I appreciate everyone who helps out, people answering questions in the, uh, you know, the chat, and uh, on you know the comments and things like that, you guys notice I've been leaving less comments. I've been trying to uh, you know get a little bit away from as many. Um, ooh, Corvus is in the chat. I was hanging out in his live stream earlier today. Uh, I'm hoping to make a, a trip down to his fish room one of these days. He's building the fish room, and uh, the best way I can describe it is his channel is old school. I remember watching his channel a really long time ago before I was even really on YouTube. I was opening up my store, watching what he was doing, and uh, you know he's got a little more than 5,000 subscribers right now, and it's really fun to, I love his live streams because it's like hanging out with a friend, and they're low key, like you know here we've got like a million people, right? And stuff kind of scrolls. And on his, you can actually like talk about each topic and and I'm insanely jealous of his, like, I'm just going to call it builder skills. That dude can build anything, apparently. Like, 
I'm always watching new projects going, dang it, if I was that handy, you know what I could do? But I'm not that handy, so, you know, I love to watch him build stuff. It's therapeutic, I feel like. Watching someone build it going, ooh, that's some good work right there. Like, I remember him, wa I remember, like, in one of his latest things in his fish room, he was, uh, like, re-leveling the concrete in his fish room, and I'm so jealous, because I so badly need that done. And to him, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to do it. I've done it before. You know, he just does that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah. Uh, LG3 Nation, $2 super chat. Well, thank you. And uh, Priscilla says, how are the Dutch auctions? I would say, uh, so first, I ended up buying the painting, uh, $300. I was supposed to do that earlier today and donate it to... Um, the Amazon Research Center, but I will do that. I will make sure we do it for the next live stream and I can show you guys and prove it and all that. And I think overall, the Dutch auction experiment, now that we're done with it, I don't think it will continue with it. It's very labor intensive. Um, the way it's coded, it actually changes the prices forever. So I have to remember like, oh, go back in and change the price, that type of thing. So, so yeah, but you know, you gotta try stuff and know how it works before you can make stuff better. So yeah. Alrighty, I am done for tonight. I'm hungry. I've got a million and one things to get done before tomorrow morning. A lot of people are showing up and got to move in that 800 gallon. And uh, yeah, you just get ready. So thanks for hanging out, guys. And uh, I guess I'll see you next Sunday. Maybe, well, we might go Turtle Live. Who knows? We'll see what's going on. What was the problem? There was a problem. Last time I had that, I remember... Uh, I tie up my camera and I can't do any of the Skype calls and stuff. So I got to see if I have any appointments scheduled with people because that gets weird. So, alrighty. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later and uh, thanks for watching. If I can find the right thing to stop it right here, we're done for the night. <laughs>